I was gonna say I'm Stephanie Garber. <laughs> like, <laughs> you can. <laughs> okay, I'm Stephanie Garber. I'm the author of Caravel, which is a same for fools. But literally, this book is amazing. Um, and it's like Miyazaki meets like Baz Luhrmann and a Florence and the Machine song. And I just stole her pitch because I'm a bad friend, but a good friend. <laughs> and I wrote these two things. They're shiny and great, and one of them is like. Uh, Hindu myth inflected, they're both Hindu myth inflected, but this is Hindu myth inflected Hades and Persephone, and this is just, I don't even know what this madness is. I wrote a <laughs> plot and the characters were like, nope, I want to banter, and they have to reclaim thrones and find their place in society and maybe fall in love and, uh, and fight through a horrific tournament where they may or may not win a wish at the end. But it's a really magical tournament, even though it's deadly. Like, I would still totally want to play because I feel like this is just all so beautiful and so magical and bewitching. Oh my gosh, you know, I'm dying and being poisoned. Whatever, it doesn't matter. I, I want it to kill me. Oh my gosh. I feel like that's how you feel when you read this book. Yeah, like, when that party is just I want so epic and you're okay with it. Yeah, yeah, it's like something you want, like, is so beautiful. You're like, I don't mind that this is killing me. That's how I felt about Caraval. Um, it's true. Thank you. Both of you guys. You go first. Um, gosh. I I go back and forth. Like, every time I have a different answer That's for this, true. depending on my mood. I know my favorite character from Stephanie's books. Dante. Because oh. he's super fine. <laughs> I love that you love him. I love this so much. It's not natural. Okay, thank you. Um, I'm going to go with Julian. He caught me off guard. I didn't expect him to be in the book as long as he was. So I had to, I, I kept him around because he was so much fun. That's what makes you a ruthless author. Like, Should I keep you alive? Entertain me, mortal. <laughs> um, who is my favorite? Oh, from the Star Touch Queen, definitely Kamala, the, f flat, the fresh eating, the flesh eating demon horse who is the... You know, casual love of my life and on semi-autobiographical. I don't eat people. I don't no wonder we get along so well. I, know. I love that horse. Right. Like, I mean, this makes sense. Amaro is probably my favorite, but then the horse is close. <laughs> <laughs> when the horse is better than your love interest. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. I feel like you can hear me. I'm just kidding. Okay. I love you. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Definitely got side eye from him from that one. <laughs> Okay, how important is it to write about like empowered young women who are getting their done, especially in today's climate where it's not exactly uh, female friendly right now? True. I, I think it's incredibly important, but I also think that one of the things I loved about Caraval and, and one of the things that really just inspired me when I was writing Maya and Gary's character was that these women contain multitudes. They can be passive and still really aggressive at the same time, and not necessarily passive aggressive, unless you're talking about Gowrie, who was the queen of that. They can love makeup and ballroom dresses and everything else and still know how to knock a man down. And so you can do both. And I, I really love that our characters sort of grab at both sides of femininity. And I think that girls need to see that they don't need to choose between like being I don't know, a pirate queen, or we're just loving makeup a lot. You can, you can have it all. I think that's that. I mean, both your books like that's something because it's like okay, I like I like all the makeup. I like the pretty things, and I like right. knowing like yeah. or, I, I, it affirms like you know that you can love those things yeah. and still be. It doesn't take away, and it can enhance who you are right. as a female. Right. Um, and I think yeah, I think with Caraval like. Scarlet is a very timid, very fearful character. She's not physically strong. But she loves so yeah. deeply. I just, oh, and so I wanted to show, like, I, my hope was just, like, that girls don't feel like they have to be a certain way. Right. Like, kind of trying to affirm, like, mm -hmm. you know, all different types of females, however right. you are. If yeah. you're, you know, less aggressive or fearful, because I tend to be very fearful role follower. <laughs> but it's like, there are different kinds of strengths. But That's I think, totally true. Yeah. I think it is really important. I hope my story is affirmed. Right. Yeah. We, like, we just, as women, we claim our agency in so many ways, and we just need to celebrate all of that. So. Uh, how do you write um, like a sexy, enticing love interest without <laughs> him having to be the one who saves her, or the one who takes care of her, which is like the normal idea of the alpha male? Gosh, oh man. <laughs> you kill them so that she has to 
<laughs> she has to figure that out is the one home. way to do it. <laughs> um, I well, the way I approach writing love interests, I don't decide who the love interest is ahead of time. I kind of see it as like options. So um, some of the options don't work out, and some of them do. So I kind of just try and see like who has chemistry with my characters. Like, I'll just keep introducing guys yeah. I think are attractive in different ways and then make them earn it. <laughs> yeah, I love that. And I totally loved Carol for that reason. Everyone is beautiful, yes. Um, I think for me, when I was writing Amar and Vikram, I really wanted to subvert an idea, like an alpha and a beta male character. I think Amar is hyper powerful and yet he still needs Maya to rescue him. And Vikram can't, I mean, he's strong, he's got great shoulders, but he's really bad at sword fighting. Oh. He'll just lift it up and just be like, I wonder what kind of alloys are in this metal. <laughs> and Gary would just hit him with the hilt. But, you know, uh, lovingly. And I, I think that what made him so much fun to write, especially Vikram, was that it's a different kind of strength. It's his intelligence, it's his, his wit. And I think it was really inspiring. Have you seen His Girl Friday? It's like, like the really old Cary Grant yeah. movie. It's really cute and I love it. And but if, like it this, ha if it compares like, anything yes. with like Vikram, because yes. I love him and his wit, like, like I will watch it. Yeah. <laughs> like the things he says, I'm just like, oh my god. <laughs> He's silly. I and I, I don't know, I think that a love interest shouldn't necessarily complete a theme like a woman, but when you love someone, I don't know, it makes your perspective broader and brighter and colors more and more iridescent and people just seem to have much more dimension and it adds depth to your life and I think we need that but uh, you don't necessarily have to have one person just to fill that spot in your heart. So, so that's, I guess, the perspective I come from when I write the boys. Mm -hmm. That's right. <laughs> okay. Um, one of the problems I have when I'm introducing a book to my book club is that sometimes because the female character is going through a growing period, she seems like the um, unlikable female character. Like, where? It's like, what did you have? Like, yeah. <laughs> where? I mean, Toa was like hard to love, but like, you know where she's coming from. I loved her. <laughs> so, I mean, she is so spicy. But. <laughs> How how do you guys feel about the whole uh, unlikable female character and how you would defend her? <laughs> I okay. I have I don't get on many soapboxes except this one. I have a soapbox <laughs> though because I think in part I feel like people love to tear things down yep. that young females love. Yep. Um, or females love, but I feel like especially like if you're a teenage girl or a young girl or even if you look like a young female or yeah. sometimes just look like a girl <laughs> people want to tear it down yeah. I feel like you know especially if you're a female and you're writing romance or fantasy it's like you know like those are things that people don't take as seriously and so I get bothered because it's like why are you tearing this down like and sometimes it's like why are you saying this character is a slut? Is it your yeah. perception? Because I'm not, I'm not saying that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not passing any judgment in the way I've written this scene, <laughs> you know? And so I feel like sometimes it's like, my perspective is like, I think like it's other, you know, how people view it. And it just, but it just bothers me because it's like, I don't want teenage girls to ever feel ashamed of the things they like. Cause I know as a teenager, um, I went through a whole period where I decided I was going to get rid of all my clothes and just wear black. I was going to be hip and cool and Audrey Hepburn and get rid of all my pink and I love pink. I'm like super pink, super flowery um, because I just felt like that would make me more respectable, more yeah, likable. Yeah. I totally understand that. Like you can't say you like this thing or you have to always say that you like garden stain when you didn't really like it. And you're just like, Sorry. you know, and you just like go out of your way to like defend Smashing Pumpkins. And you're like, honestly, right now I just want to listen to the Spice Girls and Ed Sheeran for like the 50,000th time. And I don't care if that makes me basic and I won't hide my pumpkin spice latte in autumn. You can't make me. There's a reason it's called pop. Because it's popular. <laughs> <laughs> People like it. Uh, yeah. And also like, show me a likable 15 year old. I was awful. Oh my gosh. <laughs> 
I was I, like, like miserable. Yeah, I wish I could erase. I was insufferable. I would talk about like the critical theory books I was reading that I didn't even read. I just Wikipedia them and then told people about it. Well, it was so obnoxious. <laughs> and I think it's also, yeah, there's like so many, I feel like a lot of double, double standards. Yeah. I mean, but I get really defensive. This is yeah. like the thing, like it's like, hey, you know, I know books are open to criticism, but it's like also like, how did you hear unlikable male characters? That is not a statement. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It's like, we're like, female. Heathcliff is honestly just a misunderstood hero. I'm like, Heathcliff is that? Anyway, so, <laughs> like, if we're gonna go that way, and yeah. it just makes me mad. I heard someone, I'm from Atlanta, and I heard somebody say that Scarlett O'Hara was just like an awful character, and I was like, she is the greatest. I mean, she is savage, and I would not want her in my room, but like, I wouldn't want her to be my boyfriend either. And everyone, just, <laughs> yeah, no, no. And everyone knows the name Scarlett O'Hara. Yeah, I just bow down to that ruthlessness, girl. You go get it. <laughs> just, yeah, but yeah, there's no like, no one says unlikable male character. Yeah, no one. I know. Mm -hmm. Just so rude. We should bring it back. Yeah, I Yusa we, are unlikable. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, so I don't believe. I just don't believe in unlikable female characters. You're here. Thank you. <laughs> I'm gonna go knit my cap right now. It's gonna be happy. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um. One more. Well, okay. I have two questions. Uh. We are 15 minutes ahead. Okay. 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 <laughs> I didn't know what that was, and then there's like a cat back there. Oh. Right. I Does that frighten anyone? I freaked out about the cat. That's unfortunate, mm -hmm. right? Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Brought that back. Bad memories. Yeah. So, how do you guys feel about sex in YA? Is it depends on the story, or do you want to be more uh, careful? <laughs> of the We're so giggly and the worst. We're just like, where is putting more? <laughs> <laughs> because I mean, not just young adults read YA. So. Yeah, I, would, I I really love this question because I feel like YA is totally moving towards that, and it should be. Um, and you have books like A Court of Thorns and Roses by Sarah J. Mass and A Court of Mist and Fury, and it kind of like breaks down this notion that sex is the seal of soulmates. And I love that. And I think young girls need to hear that if you have if you have relations with more than one guy, you're not a slut. It doesn't mean that he's automatically your soulmate. And, you know, it's an act of intimacy is what it is at the end of the day. It adds emotional depth. It's not like a, a sentence and a ball and chain. So I think throw in more. <laughs> well, I think, I mean, I feel like it's just like, I don't know. Like, I think it's always interesting how it's like, why is it okay to have kids killing kids? Right, but you think, but yeah, I know, but then it's a fate to black and you're like, wait. <laughs> no, I think it's just like, I think everyone has, um, I teach creative writing and I always ask my students, um, where do they draw the line with like sex, mm -hmm. um, profanity mm -hmm. and um, violence. Yeah. And I feel like it's really interesting because they usually pick different lines. Like yeah. I feel like certain people are really bothered by certain things and right. care less about any yeah. anything else so for me it's like I don't know I don't think of it as an issue it's like hey yeah. if people want to put it in their books if it fits like do it do it yeah you know like I, totally agree. I mean the, I don't know I feel like there's room for all kinds of things there is it's like, and young adult is like spanning to subsume what new adult could have been yeah. on like the bookshelves and everything That's else true. and I I think it's great that we have a division of upper YA mm -hmm. and lower YA you know and all for one hi Cindy oh uh, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know it's cool, it's cool.